Today, I wanna to tell you all about one of my favorite meads I've made in quite some time. So let's get started. The mead I'm talking about today is a coffee blossom traditional mead. Now when you hear coffee blossom, some people might think, oh, it tastes like coffee. Well, this is coffee, bloss coffee blossom honey. So it has elements of maybe roasty side, maybe darker note, but it's not true coffee tasting. It's not like you're drinking your cup of joe. And that's okay. I have some right here and a lot right here, and we'll talk about why this isn't totally full. It's not full for a good reason, and I'll talk about that. But here's some of it right here. This mead is one of my favorites right now because it is such an interesting highlight of honey character. The sweetness level that I got this up to is super nice and I did a great job with the tan inside. Kind of that mouth coating sensation, it's really nice. And the acid balance on this is also very good. So this is a fantastic traditional mead and I can't wait to show you how to make it. So this is gonna start, specifically this coffee blossom is gonna start with you getting coffee blossom honey. Now specifically, I used the American Mead Maker Association's discount code from a couple months ago. If you want to join their, the whole organization, it's a really cool mead making association, American Mead Maker Association, and they do a monthly newsletter that includes some fun information and then also a honey deal of the month. The honey deal that I ran across, super good deal, I wish I'd bought more of the honey, was a 60 pound pail of coffee blossom honey for $250 and that included shipping. And I know some of you are going, holy crap, that's a lot of money for honey. And it is, but for a really interesting varietal and a good varietal like coffee blossom, $250 is like a really good price. With shipping, shipping's expensive. So I should have bought more, but I didn't. Anyways, we got the honey in and I wanted to make a standard strength mead in this circumstance. So this right here is a standard strength coffee blossom traditional mead. And it's only that honey, water, and yeast, of course. So I made a six gallon batch of this mead and it used the recipe card you're seeing on screen, 13.2 pounds of coffee blossom honey. I used the Mangrove Jacks M05 mead yeast, which is uh, kind of interesting, but it's done well in other traditional meads I've done. So I used it in this one. We then got our water up to the six gallon mark and we mixed it all up. Our starting gravity was 1.080. So this thing is setting, you know, at a 10 and a half percent after fermentation, which our primary fermentation after mixing all of our stuff together, we just let it start going. It's important that we took that gravity reading because that allows us to know how alcoholic this brew is and to just watch fermentation go. 1.080 primary fermentation took three, two or three weeks, I wanna say. Um, and I noticed it started to sort of clear up one notable thing about this honey is that it's high quality and you can tell from this um, because there's a lot of particulates and things. So not a lot of filtering happened with this honey, which is a good thing. But because there's so many particulates, this thing has been a pain to clear up. So two, three weeks later of fermentation, we racked it into a new container and we let it set for quite some time. I just wanted to kind of give it time for things to hopefully flocculate out to the bottom and they started to do that pretty naturally. So about a week, two weeks goes by, and we stabilize the brew with potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite. You have the options of pasteurizing if you would like to do that, but I recommend stabilizing in some form so you can back sweeten with more honey. The dry version of this being like ending at 1.000 was not very good. <laughs> Did not taste very interesting. And um, so I definitely needed to back sweeten it. It's important to note, I did add Fermate O, or yeast nutrient. I did it at the 24 hour mark. You could do it at any point, um, but I kind of like the 24 hour mark for this circumstance. After we had stabilized it, we went ahead and put some Hungarian oak cubes on. And we'd racked the whole mead into this oak cube situation. We let them set on the oak for four to five weeks, I wanna say. The recommended time is six weeks, I believe, on the cubes package. But we got plenty of oak flavor from it, which is really nice. After sitting on those cubes for, again, four or five weeks, we racked it again. Each time it's getting a little clearer, things are falling out of suspension, which is good. 
and we went ahead and back sweetened it. So we back sweetened it with six and a half pounds of coffee blossom honey. And I know some of you are like, holy cow, that's a lot of coffee blossom honey. Uh, the total investment into this is over 20 pounds now. However, it really needed it. We wanted to get that final gravity up and I kept adding more and going, it just needs a little more sweetness. So we added six and a half pounds of coffee blossom honey and we added some malic acid and tartaric acid to balance the acid profile of this brew, which is really important because our final gravity on this, probably one of the sweetest things I've made in a long time is 1.042. However, it doesn't taste like that. It's definitely got sweetness, but between your oak, the acid that I added, and then that sweetness, it's a nice little balance and it, it works well. Since we added more honey, we added more chaos, less clarity in that circumstance. And I went ahead and actually put it into this vessel and we added some sparkaloid, which is a clarifying agent that works really well. You can see at the bottom here, there's a layer of junk. And I, since I moved it, I think I had, yeah, I disturbed up everything. I had moved it from across the way, so I probably shouldn't have done that because now it's not clear again. Oh well, I need a bottle more of it soon. The reason this is not full is because I've been sending this off to competitions. And so uh, I'll share my results from the competitions that I've got so far. And uh, again, I, I don't know, I'm recording this pre-results, so who knows? how it did, good or bad. But send it off to some competitions. I do need to go ahead and bottle the rest of it. I just so happened to bottle a whole 10 gallons of something else today, and I did not want to do that extra four gallons here. So plenty of mead left over though. This mead is fantastic, and I am going to jump to a tasting that I did with Matthew Allen, who was the winner of the Ultimate Mead Maker of 2023, uh, so 2024, and uh, he helped me out with this tasting, it was a lot of fun. So, I hope you enjoy this tasting. If you would like to make this mead, here's the recipe card. You will need coffee blossom honey, which is kind of rare, but it's super good, and I highly recommend it if you can. So thanks for uh, seeing the process. Let's watch a fun tasting. Welcome, Matthew, to, or Bucky, I don't know which way you want me to call you today, because you, you kind of have a, a fame on Discord, but then also, you know. <laughs> Yeah, my real name is fine. Okay. Well, I think the nickname's an unfortunate uh, uh, holdover from Reddit. I put uh, zero into it like 10 years ago, and here we are. I've always wondered. Welcome, Matthew, to a quick tasting of, I say quick, doesn't have to be quick, of my coffee blossom traditional mead made in, I got to go backwards in time a little bit. Was it August, maybe? I don't know, August, July. It's not very old. We're like maybe three months at max. It's going to be a uh, standard strength coffee blossom mead. And uh, I really just want to pick your brain, get some notes on it. I mean, notes, it's already in. Actually, part of it's not in bottles. So I could do things technically to it <laughs> if you have notes for me. But I'm curious what you think. Let's go ahead and crack it open. All right. Have you ever used coffee blossom? My first question. I. I have not used it personally. Um, I've had a couple traditionals made with it before. Um, it's interesting. So my local meadery, um, of course, I'm blanking on the name here, that, that does one that I had semi recently. Yeah. It, um, it has a lot of particulates. That's one thing I found interesting is like the honey itself has so much stuff in it. Even this bottle, like at the very top, it had some floaties and I just couldn't get rid of them without filtering. Um, so a quality honey, I guess. Yeah. It's good got... find for the honey. <laughs> yeah. Where is this? Where is this from? Is this from the uh, this is... AMA buy or? Recently? Yeah, this was the AMA buy from, I think August. Um, and, uh, it was a great deal. 250 bucks for 60 pounds of coffee blossom with shipping, which I know people are like $250. Holy cow. That is like a killer deal for a varietal like this. Yeah. Ship for a bucket. That's super good so i was like i have to do this i still have probably 30 pounds of it um i actually made a another coffee blossom traditional that i used for the uh we had like a, a pouring event here in edmond and a uh, uh, local homebrew club hosted it and so bc and i went and we poured some stuff and he took a cherry lime made and uh something else and i took my apple cinnamon and a six percent coffee blossom hydromel 
And that one actually won the uh, people's choice from that event. People voted for those things. So it was pretty good. Now I'm curious with like yeah. a 13%, you know, how, how it will fare. All right. Let me know what you think. It is young, but I, uh, I will accept all your notes. <laughs> Yeah, this is nice. There's that the I've, I've had the the one oh, it was Art of M, the local place that I had it from. That just has a super faint coffee note. I don't. This doesn't taste like coffee, but it's a it does taste unique from the honey standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'm supposed, I should give a sensory impression first, but it, I mean I think it's it's really nice. Like the I don't know, did you did you acidify this at all, or is it just did I honey? oh like no no acids added. Like the acid level is really nice. Like I've got that nice mouth watering. And I added a pinch of tartaric and malic acid. Yeah, I mean, so so I really like the balance on it. I mean, it's fairly sweet, mm -hmm. um, but the acidity is balanced really nicely. And you've avoided a thing um, that I've done myself, and I've tasted like at Meat Stampede where people add too much acid, and it just tastes you could just taste like tartaric acid. So yeah. I always feel like when I'm I'm doing those balancing steps, like if I um, like there'll be times where I want more acid, but like the flavor's changing and then you just have to stop because it's starting to not taste like honey. It's starting to taste like acid powder. Mm -hmm. um, so I love the balance on this. I mean, it's, it's, it's sweet. I'm going to guess this is at least 1030, right? I think you're right on it. It's about 1030. But I mean, for, as for the use, oh, I mean, no. it doesn't... it's 10, 1042. Sorry. 1042. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. As, as for the youth, I mean, I, I, so this is, I think also like this, the sweet spot, if you'll forgive the, the pun, of like ABV for traditionals. Like I think this is right where you want to be. I've judged like, especially like semi-sweet where, you know, people are doing 13, 14 plus and they just taste like someone poured vodka in the, the mead. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I love the balance with this. The, I wish I'm kind of grasping for honey descriptors here. There's just a little earthy note in there. I think that's the coffee blossom, but um, I mean, I think you've, you've nailed it. This is fantastic. Thank you. I, I think the, um, you know, you asked about acid balance and I, I had realized I was going to back sweeten this pretty heavily. The um, lower ABV version that I made was about 1030 for that 6% as a final gravity. Um, of course, with back sweetening, not just stopping there. And uh, I knew that I was going to have to do this here. So that malic and tartaric really, like you said, rounded out that sweetness because i think minus the acid this thing would be not drinkable yeah it might be kind of going um I, I mean my personal taste like i like things to have a little bit of that white wine kind of yeah. maybe not as strong as the really acidic ones but but from a mouthfeel perspective like i think that's a good place for traditionals to be in. And, um, i'm really enjoying this one so. well, thank you well done well I'm uh, less than two months old. I, I thought I was older than two months with it, but it's not. And so what's fun is people are going to be like, you should have waited to do the tasting. I, I don't think it's bad right now. I mean, like, of course it's going to get better, but tasting it at this point is really not too shabby. So I'm uh, I'm curious to give it some time. I've got plenty. I mean, I still, I'm looking at almost five gallons of it in a carboy that I still need to fully bottle at this point. But uh, yeah. Thank you for helping me with this part of the tasting, or this tasting, I should say. There's not well, another part. Well, thanks for sharing. Yeah. Um, my plan is to, uh, well, for the viewers, a little behind the scenes. You're going to see Matthew, or you will have seen Matthew in many other videos because he's not only tasting this, he's tasting something else. And we're doing a podcast episode, which if you're watching this, um, you might or might not know Matthew was the winner of the Ultimate Bead Maker of 2023, and I did a whole podcast with him, talking to him about his experience brewing, the Ultimate Bead Maker, and all those things. You can find that in the link in the description. But Matthew, thank you for your time. Oh, thanks. We got another tasting to get to, so let's do it. <laughs> 